this felt like one of those books that we didn't really have a choice on writing. It felt like it was happening. It was a calling happening to us. Purpose underneath it was we really just wanted to share what we found through our own relationship and with clients, which is that there can be holiness in relationships and that bridging the gap between two people and creating authentic intimacy and really opening up to the deeper nature within one another can be a spiritual act. The difference between love and holy love, why we use the term holy is we believe it is. If you're really summoning the energy of love, it's transformational in nature. It will change you. It is an energy that runs through us. Love is usually something that people interpret more as what is going to make me feel better and and how can I get those needs met, which are sometimes egoic needs. And holy love is using your relationship as a portal to the divine. So it's relationship as a spiritual path. And it's not just your intimate relationship. It can be any relationship, relationship with your children, with your coworkers, and or even just people you don't know well, acquaintances. It's seeing the other person as a soul instead of whatever they might even just be presenting to you is their interpretation of themselves, really seeing through the presentation of something to find where love is in all instances. When you approach relationships without seeing love as a sacred or holy thing, it's much easier to get caught up in miscommunication and missing one another. But if we see love as something that's transformational, that can happen to us, that can change us, then we see our partners differently and come to the relationship with reverence. We make a distinction between your ego and your soul. We define ego as who you think you are, as your past belief systems, as the culture you were raised in, as your hobbies, as your personality traits. But we see the soul as your essence. So this is the part of you that is you, no matter what you do. This is the part of you that was, you were born this way. It was your essence before you were born and after you die, your eternal part. And I think it's so important to recognize that in relationship. Because do we love our partners for their personalities or what they do for us? Or do we love them for their core essence? And that's really where true connection is born and life is both that's why our podcast and our mystery school is called holy and human we're parents we're raising kids and you have to with kids teach them the skills development in life how to kind of achieve and be successful as a human and then also are we seeing them as their souls are we sitting with their holy self are we mirroring and reflecting that part of them that isn't about doing more or better, but just about who they are as beings. And are we being with them as beings? Otherwise, it's no fun. If we just get stuck Mm -hmm. doing all the doing, we're not present for our lives. So part of really being in this life now is about opening to the holy and opening to the present moment, the miracle of what is happening around us all the time. Crucible is a journey of trials and tests. And we describe it as a crucible because there's a misconception in our culture that love is an emotion. And should and, always feel good. And it's an emotion of happiness. It has an ideal of happiness attached to it, an ideal of what love should look like. When we have that notion of love, when we feel disappointed in relationships, or we feel we're lacking that happiness, we become disenchanted with love itself. But if we see love as a process, as a journey of something that has transformational power, then we let it in in a different way. And our expectations of love change. We don't expect it to feel a certain way. We're open to whatever the love experience is in this moment. A crucible is also an initiation. So when you're open to love being a crucible, you're understanding it's a profound journey that you're being initiated into and that it's a real gift and it's really sacred to be initiated into that. The most important thing that I hope readers take away from Holy Love is 
that they understand that the spiritual path is not one we have to take alone. And that spirituality is not something that we have to do a solo journey up to the top of a mountain and learn our how to meditate and do yoga in a specific way. That sometimes spirituality is as simple as learning to love yourself and learning to love somebody else and to allow that love in. You know, if you talk about what the common thread is between all spiritual practices and religion is they all talk about love. And for me, I think about where is our most direct path to love? And often it's just with the people in our lives that we love. And can we awaken such a deep love within ourselves and within them that it becomes a holy experience? And I think what I would like people to most take away is that you can do this. You don't have to be special or super psychic or anything. It's about it's our spiritual birthright as humans, as souls having a human experience. We're wired to do this. And all of our work is just about a remembering. And it's very natural. Again, we do this with our kids. Kids are great at this, actually. And we're really usually programmed out of this. So what we're doing is just reminding people what's inherently natural and and easy for us to do. It's that idea you don't have to do anything to awaken. You just have to stop resisting the awakening to allow it to occur. Yes. It's about turning within and connecting with your soul and connecting to that part that you know is true. And that is your wisest part and the part of you that can navigate love. We often try to navigate love from our minds or from our egos, but our, we're not smart about love and relationships in that way. But intuition and your soul knows who you love why you love them and how to love them. So it's just waking up that part of yourself that's always been there. That is love. The part yeah. of you that is love. Yeah. 